Okay, we've got a, a new type of video for you today. We've got Nikon here. Chris, Chris from Nikon is here. Thanks for coming, Chris. You're my guest today. And uh, that's because Nikon, I don't know if it's just North America or what, but they have a strange policy, which is that when a camera is pre-embargo, which is in this case, we're filming this a few weeks before it's going to be coming out. Uh, they won't send it to me and let me play with it by myself. They have to have a chaperone. Meet the chaperone, which is... Chris, you're, you're, you're from Mississauga area? Or Correct. I work at the head office, yeah. So not only that, he's Canadian as well. Okay, Chris, what'd you bring? Well, I may have brought the fun new Nikon ZF. Okay. And the best part about this too is that I, I don't have to be some Nikon shill. Chris gets to be the Nikon shill, so he can be all excited about it and I can be not excited about it. Is that going to make for fun dynamic? I don't know. So, and you called it a ZF. I did. Because it's can Canadian strong. You can see, where's Patrick? Oh, and we got Patrick, by the way. Patrick is Hello, uh, everybody. operating C cam, which uh, is the most versatile one. Oh, that's a nice little shot there. Good job, Patrick. There you go. Vintage aesthetic is uh, is what we're going for here. See these dials? Is this Nikon's first mirrorless vintage kind of? No. No? No, we have a crop version. We have a ZFC. I should have specified. Also full frame. Yeah, so it's a full frame vintage -y, so like the ZFC, but but full frame. Yes. Sensor-wise, supposed to be somewhat similar to like the Z6 II. Correct. Similar megapixel. 24.5 megapixels, full frame, same basic sensor, um, but the big difference is the processor that comes along with it. So right. this is now XSpeed 7 processor, versus basically, six. versus dual XSpeed 6. Okay. And it's essentially the same processor, processor that's in the Z8 and the Z9. Is 1.7 faster than two sixes? Oh, 10 times faster. Oh, wow. That's a significant upgrade. So same processor as the 8 and 9. Correct. Okay, that's that's considerable then. Because price point wise, this thing's coming in at, at 2000 USD? Correct. Uh, just body. Yeah, right? body only. Um, and then here we've got uh, a 40 mil. Oh, it is an F2. Is it F2? I, I wasn't sure it was a F2 or 2.8. This is nice. So this is a new, newish lens to new for this body or did it come out a little while ago? Came out a little while ago. Uh, I think it fits the aesthetic quite nicely. 40 mil F2. But... I gotta check and see how it feels to the. What are you guys doing here? One over eight thousand. Shutter speed's got its own dial right here. That's probably why it was jacked up. If somebody wanted to turn the knob, I don't know why. I just instinctively putting it to one fiftieth. It's probably in photo mode or something like. No, it's in. Yeah, it's in photo mode, and I'm like, well, put it to one fiftieth. Uh, you guys are probably marking this more as a photo camera than a video camera, right? We are. But the video specs on it are surprisingly yeah. heavy. So, so that little small screen up top will show you your your aperture, your current aperture. Can you see this tiny little? Oh, nice. So you can. That's cool. Yeah. Kitchen glare, but so how look? Can we go all the way down f two? Nice. I'm surprised the lens doesn't have a like an aperture. It feels like a lens that would, you know. This viewfinder is interesting. Well, it's the same viewfinder that's in the Z six two Z seven two. So okay. three point six million dots. Uh, flippy screen. That's a novel thing for, if we're comparing it to a Z6 II, right? Mm -hmm. Or even any of those other light cameras. I don't think you've had a flip screen on those, right? We've never had a full frame, full flip screen. 40 mil looks good. Yeah, I like it. That's a nice little lens. F2, it feels nice on the camera. This camera has a considerable amount of weight. It actually feels like a film camera and not like a vintage vibe. It actually feels like... Like the FM2, which right. is kind of what this was uh, directly styled after. So speaking of that, where the film goes, uh, I can't open it. Where do the cards go on this thing? Underneath? Yep. I'm not a fan of that. I know. Because let's check the... We're gonna have plate interference, quarter 20, and then there's the door. You'd have to run like a little Arca Swiss or something. You know, if you ran like a 501, I feel like it might get interfered there a little bit. But uh, battery-wise, we're using the same battery, but the, what is this, the C revision or whatever? Yeah, so that's actually the B right there, because that's okay. just what I had available, but it yeah, will be the e l 15 c Correct. And then this is weird. You've got an SD card, uh, UHS-2, maybe? Correct. And then a micro SD card yes. slot. Yes. What? Well, we wanted to make sure that people still had dual card functionality because this camera is gonna hit a lot of different customers. And we wanna make sure that we know with the Z, the original Z6, original Z7 did not have dual cards. So we wanted to go and make sure that this one did have it, but you're talking about the size and how it kind of feels small, but heavy and kind of really solid in your hands. 
there's certain things that we had to go and do to make sure that we kept that size as small as possible. And one of those was the memory cards. You tell me you can't put two SD card slots in no. there. No, so when, when you lose the grip, so the battery right now is flipped sideways. Usually it goes into the larger hand grip. Right, yeah, okay. So you do gain a lot of extra space by doing that, by essentially flipping that battery and cutting out a lot of the internals by still having a VR system in there, by still having all the extra Wi-Fi internals that we'd expect in a regular camera of this day and age, right. there were certain things that we had to do. One of them was we had to go with micro SD to give dual cards. It was either that or just one card. Secondary slot function, I'm looking at it now. So it seems like you have the, the micro SD is providing full functionality though. For the photographers out there, um, what are the spec, what's the spec for, for photo? I think I remember from the briefing, it's 14 mechanical First Correct. And up to up 30. to up to 14 frames a second, and then if you go JPEG only, uh, similar to like a Z8, Z9, it'll be in our C30 mode, and that's JPEG only, full resolution. But electronic shutter. Correct. Right. So 14 is mechanical. Yes. There's quite a few functions on the on the top of the camera. So we've got manual, and then your priorities, and then all the way down to auto, and then a couple function buttons on the front, which are they almost look like like onyx and stainless, kind of like little. They look like cufflinks or something. You know what I mean? Like little. Fun little details. Okay, so we got a mic in, and is that a headphone out? Correct. So we got full ports there. Micro HDMI. I knew you'd love this one. Yeah. I mean, I sell a cable for it, but still, I mean, if you're going to make an argument about how you have to put a micro SD card in here, I don't think I'm going to be able to get you to put a full size HDMI port. And then just USB C. Uh, same, you got the power delivery protocol Correct. like you had in the. Um, yep. That's nose grease right there if I've ever seen it. <laughs> so similar, similar button layout. No joystick, like little nipple thing. You use the D-pad for moving around the focus point. So let's talk about, okay, so 3D autofocus or 3D tracking, right? So we had 3D tracking with almost all of our DSLRs for however many years, a long, long time. And the Z9 was the first to bring it into mirrorless. Gotcha. Z8 as well. And because we have the same processing power with those two cameras, we were able to bring it in with the uh, ZF as well. Is there any sort of like baked in film presets and stuff like that, given the body style? Not dedicated presets. Yeah. We do have like tw over 20 creative presets that you can go and dial in almost like Instagram filters. Yeah, yeah. And then we do have a dedicated black and white saw, mode. Yeah, right yeah the new monochrome, right? Yeah, so we have monochrome mode up, up top there. So you go photo, video, or, or black and white. When you're in black and white, is it just photo? Correct. Let's put it over there. Ooh. So compared to the Z6 II then, what would be sort of the sh some of the show-stopping features for photo shooters? The big difference is the processor. So that gives you all of the deep learning algorithms that we built for the Z8, Z9. That's now included in here with all the subject detection, detection types. So you can go and not just do, um, let's say, dogs and humans. You can go and do birds and planes and everything's all built in. And then the stabilization is supposed to be drastically improved, right? In the briefing, they said, that the Z62 was like a five stop rating for the VR or whatever. And then the this one's supposed to rate up to like eight stops. Eight stops. And there's some novel feature where like it, depending on where you move your focus point or something, it's like. Yeah, so you can go into the menu and you can turn on a new mode so you can link the VR, the, the, the location of where the VR is going to be the most um, effective. You can link that to where your autofocus is. Let's talk about video stuff. So I'm gonna flip the switch. So let me get this straight. We've got three professionals in this video and not a single one of them remembered to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Well, luckily, Editor Gerald is here to take care of that. I'm gonna keep working on the video. Hopefully you're enjoying it. And in the meantime, let me tell you about Storyblocks. So Storyblocks is a stock media platform that boasts a massive library of high quality assets aimed to strengthen your video production. Their subscription model provides predictable costs without any paperclip licensing. You just pick a plan, pay that fee, and that's it and you'll enjoy unlimited downloads of HD and 4K video files, images, and motion graphics templates. And the platform is intuitive and easy to use, and new content is added regularly to ensure that you have access to up-to-date assets to satisfy your project. And if you're an Adobe Creative Cloud user, you can now access the entire Storyblocks library right in Premiere Pro or After Effects by installing a clever little plugin, which can really speed up your workflow. And whether it's those motion graphics templates or the high-quality stock footage, remember that with Storyblocks, anything you download is 100% royalty-free forever with no restrictions on where you can distribute your finished projects. So to get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to storyblocks.com slash undone, or click the link in the description. All right, now back to dealing with Patrick's elbow creeping in in every single shot. It wasn't until the Z9 came along that you could actually record and log. 
you had to hook up a recorder on the Z62, Z72, whatever. So internally it would be like you could do 8-bit flat or something, right? That's what Nikon's called flat, yep. right? And flat's decent, mm -hmm. but you, so you're stuck with 8-bit flat. You want to go to analog, you want to do 10-bit, you want to do any of those things. It's got to be an external recorder. So there's obviously caveats with that. This non-video camera is the first, like, I don't know what you want to call it, non-pro body full frame that you can shoot internal 10-bit and log. Yep. That's a that's an important thing. It absolutely know? is. 4K up to 30, oversampled from the 6K sensor. Correct. 4K 60, which there was also something about that, right? Where it was like at one point, it, it wasn't in a camera, then it was like a firmware upgrade or something. They said it's complicated. Yeah. It's not complicated. It's 4K 60 at a 1.5 times 1. crop. 1.5 times crop. crop. Not oversampled. Obviously, you're going to 4K readout. Did Nikon give any kind of rating on like what they expect? Like the 4K, like how you can get 4K 60 or like hot environments for 4K 24 or stuff like that? So I don't have exact numbers just yet. Um, the camera can go and record the same time limit. So 125 minutes. So the two hours and five. Has anybody ever told you what the two hour and five minutes about? Even the Z9, it's two hours and five minutes. And that's not because it's overheating. It just goes, all right, that's enough. Two hours and five minutes. Even if I knew, I'd have to kill you. I suppose though, I mean, that's about how long the battery generally lasts on these cameras anyway. But you'd think, hook it up to power delivery. You have a Z9. It ain't going to overheat. Let me record for four hours or something. You know, what am I doing? Like, why? But anyway, and two hours and five minutes. Why the five minutes? You know, like, anyway. Um, so it has that. There's no 30. I think like one of the previous Z cameras had like a 30 minute. Z6 to Z7 too. Redundant recording in video? No. And you can't use the micro SD, right? Correct. So there's that. I'm looking through some of the, uh, some of the extra like video functions here. Zebras, uh, I see. Um, you said there are waveforms? Correct. Where would I find those? Nikon's menus are still insane. The like A16, look under the G's, G12. It's like we're playing bingo on the back of this thing here. Where's the waveform? I flipped. Oh. So when you flip it around, when you flip it around, you can go and turn this off, but this is designed to be easy. And if you're, so if let's say you're trying to see yourself, you don't want all that extraneous information when you're just going and looking at the thing. It's cool that it's an option. I assume you can disable Absol it. Too. Absolutely. So there, it's like waveform, and then no waveform. <laughs> you know something I've always liked about uh, about Nikon's menus is um, so we can show you this Patrick at the same time. Wait, I can't. I can't even turn on the menu when the screen's flipped out because of the mode that you're okay, in. Okay, tell me about the, how do I turn this mode off? Self-portrait mode? Okay. You want self-portrait mode off and now. I'll show them that. Down in the wrench menu there, there's a self-portrait mode. That's what's putting on the limitations. So now do we got a waveform? We do. Okay. So what were we actually talking about? Oh yeah, if you go up here to frame size and frame rate, I like that it's, the resolutions are all displayed based on uh, ascending frame, uh, frame rate. So, and PAL is in there too, which is nice. So it's like, you don't have to go in and switch the frequency of your whole camera. It's like 24, 25, 30, 50, 60, just in like a logical order. In case we didn't mention it, by the way, this is a interchangeable lens. I think I turn everything backwards on Nikon. Interchangeable lens camera. It's not just this 40 mil, just in case I didn't make that clear or whatever. Yeah, you can buy body only. You can buy it with the normal Z24 to 70 F4 lens, or you can buy it with the special edition 40 mil. I'm operating from the perspective of like, well, how do I feel about it as a vintage camera rather than how do I think of it as a camera as a whole? And I think that whole, you know, conundrum is why I generally kind of write off vintage camera vibes in my head because it's like you're making sacrifices for a certain look, you know? You could argue that maybe the dials are more efficient, but then at the same point, it's like you got to put them to third stop and then use your back dials anyway. So they're just taking up real estate. So now, Patrick, I don't like it. But as far as vintage cameras go, not only is this the most legit seeming one of like, like you said, it actually looks like a, a, a Nikon film camera. If all people just want to know is whether or not like I sound off on the video, I obviously have to do the testing might not produce any results anyway. It might test very similar to a Z6 II. Yeah. So in that case, it seems to just fix some of the annoyances I have with the Z6 II without really inflating the cost. So beyond that, it's just going to come down to whether you dig it, you know, and if you do, then buy it. It's not like it's the same price as the other ones. So, you know, you're right about the weight. Immediately, mm -hmm. the weight is really nice. It's funny because it's niche and it's kitschy a little bit, but it legitimately feels like an old film camera. So I know like the hipster side of my brain is kicking in that a lot of people are going to love this. <laughs> we didn't skimp out on on the actual build of the camera. There's partial magnesium alloy body with our carbon fiber blend as, as the other side, brass dials, full weather ceiling. So I don't know, Gerald, I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I want to play with it. Yeah. What do you think of it for the price? 
I think for the price, I, the thing I like about it is that, yeah, I would buy, be buying it as a niche camera. Like, I don't think, me personally, this would be my main camera, but I would love to have it in the kit of cameras, to be honest. And the fact that if I was like, oh, you know what, on this trip, I'm only gonna bring that Nikon and not feel like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to shoot much video with it because it's gonna suck and I don't wanna have my flip out screen if I wanna vlog or something like that, that nothing is sacrificed on the other side with the video is smart. Because I think now, Every camera, the tech is there that you should have everything built into these cameras now that you shouldn't have to make this weird compromise choice. Whereas I feel like with this, if I just picked it up and it's the only thing and I just had this 40 mil, I could shoot a client project with it. I could do anything with it, right? Am I even in focus? It, it picks you because the camera knows you. <laughs> <laughs> should we, should I get one from Nikon? And also should Nikon stop requiring chaperones? Did you like Chris? Was he entertaining? Because he shouldn't have to come. They should just mail. You could just mail the camera. I'm gonna turn Gerald into a hipster photographer. That's my job to figure that out. Show over. <laughs>